Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. My name is Ruben and today we're going to talk about Nano X Imaging, also known as Nanox. The agenda for today will be as follows. We'll start with Capital Market Summary, a very deep dive in this company. I have an interview for you with CEO. We will talk about a short report about this company as well. Check the financials and opportunity and the risks. Let's go. Right now, the day of the recording, we trade around 20 US dollars. The company has a market capitalization of approximately 942 million. They actually don't make any revenue at all. So therefore, we don't have a price to earnings ratio for this company. And regarding the biggest news, well, that was last month, April 2021, Nanox, and uh, they received FDA clearance of single source digital X-ray technology for their Nanox Arc. The company at a glance. Nano X Imaging has developed an alternative X-ray solution to replace traditional analog high voltage uh, filament heated systems, which are currently the standard on the market. While the technicalities are kind of complex, the company believes its novel silicon based cold cathode field emission technology represents a paradigm shift to this essential medical device. If focus on the left, we have the what? Well, Nanox aims to build a global infrastructure for medical imaging, and they want to serve an unmet need in this market because two thirds of the world's population, they don't have a meaningful access to medical imaging. They want to change this by using game changing tech. The Nanox novel digital X-ray source replaces an analog X-ray that has been used for over 100 years and enables for significant cost reduction. So in other words, make it cheaper and then they want to apply this with a disruptive business model also known as the m SAS, which stands for medical screening as a service and that opens a recurring revenue model that has the potential to provide for substantial revenues so this is one of the traditional tubes that they use into the traditional uh, x-ray machines and they heat up uh, a total filament to 2000 celsius to produce the electron streams necessary for the x-ray uh, emission and the main contributor to the high cost uh, yeah is actually this because it requires extreme high voltage complex mechanics and special cooling uh, to produce the electrons needed for this x-ray emission resulting in an average cost of hundred fifty thousand dollars for the source alone so the technical transformation is moving from one metal filament heated to 2000 celsius to something else uh, with 100 million nanocones filled on a silicon chip emitting digitally controlled electron streams on the low voltage. The Nanox Digital Microelectromechanical System, also known as the MEMS uh, X rays, is based on technology originally uh, developed by Sony Corporation and was acquired by Nano X back in 2011. And the company owns a manufacturing facility in Japan and has signed agreements with Korea's SK Telecom to expand capacity. And the company considers the proprietary technology mature and optimized over years of in house research backed by a portfolio of patents to realize this new machine. The company explains that the Nanox Arc hardware incorporating the X ray source provides key advantages over traditional analog systems and are four advantages. One, there is reduced duration of radiation exposure. Two, there is multi spectral imaging capacity using one X ray source. Three, simplified hardware structure and the last one which is for higher frequency use over a longer lifetime the company believes that the nanox arc system can streamline the entire medical screening process allowing for expanded usage worldwide a key component of the device is the nanox tube with a hundred dollar estimated cost in mass production compared to the analog x-ray sources that can cost upwards of $150,000. And by doing this, it will enable a system quantum leap where you go from an analog system, which is single source, single modality, very large and complex, and it costs like millions of dollars to a system that is digital, multi-source, which is multi-modalities, actually has a smaller footprint and only costs 10 thousands of dollars. Here they show clinical quality imaging on the right, they show a picture from the commercial device, which is used right now. And if you focus on the left, they show a picture 
uh, that is used from the Nanox machine. And if you ask me, it looks quite good to be honest. So here we have more pictures from the RZA 2020. On the left, we have the Nanox single source live imaging and radiologists diagnostics. Then again on the left, they show the hand of the CEO, Rand Paul Yankin, and it was taken during this live demo using the Nanox single source device with the Nanox tube. If we focus on the right, they show the Nanox multi-source 3D tomosynthesis, and they show a single slice from a reconstructed 3D tomosynthesis image that was also taken during this demo using the Nanox Arc, a multi-source device containing the Nanox X-ray tubes. The company also wants to use Nanox Cloud, which will be the central backbone of your imaging infrastructure that will provide the ability to scale with connectivity to robust services. So Nanox would transmit all imaging data to the cloud the SaaS platform, and this platform would employ a matching engine to match the scans to the radiologists. And then they split this up into three components. So medical AI systems, they would provide first response and decision assertive information. The second one is the radiology specialists would provide diagnostics online. And also the hospitals and doctors, they would get real-time global access. Summarizing, we already know that the company got FDA clearance on their single source digital X-ray solution. And the plan is to submit an additional 510K applications with respect to the multi-source Nanox Arc and Nanox Cloud, which if cleared, they will expect it to be their commercial imaging system. Right now, let's listen to an interview from CEO Rand Paul Yankin from Nano X Imaging. Basically, what Nanox is trying to do, we're trying to disrupt this market in two ways. First of all, we've created this. This is an X ray tube that is a uh, way like an apple. It's digital X ray tube, and that replaces, you know, one meter and 100 kilos of traditional uh, William Rentgen X ray tube. It's totally digital, very low cost, and because of that, it can be very, very versatile and affordable. And the second one, of course, it's a business model. As you said, we're moving from capital equipment to service. And that's a very, very big uh, leap because we can envision, and in fact, our plan is to place globally 15,000 uh, of those yeah. uh, full body devices, a multi source, connect them with the cloud, and uh, through the cloud, provide diagnostic uh, globally to people that do not have anything or in economies that actually are already developed. Now, to do that, uh, you need to, uh, first of all, clear this technology because after 126 years, you needed to prove that this technology, this X-ray technology, which is totally digital and working in room temperature versus 2000 degrees C, it, uh, it's working. And the clearance we got from the FDA over the weekend basically approve a single source of those tubes in a system uh, under 510K pass, right. where the equivalent right. is one of the GE machines now so, from here to place few of those in array it's not a big deal and we're going to do that all right so not a big deal where are you in the production process right now yeah so actually we already we already uh actually spoke to bloomberg and we uh we broadcast from our factory in israel we have three locations where production is happening as we speak the semiconductor which is the enabling technology is made in korea and japan right now the tube itself is being assembled in Korea and in Israel. We have a, a facility where we are assembling many of those as we speak. Uh, practically what we're looking for, we're looking for the clearance in order to ship those uh, devices to our customers. And today, as we speak, see today, we have over 5,000 units that are already spoken for and contracts that are being uh, already signed. And you have, you, have the, you have the production capacity right now and the funds right now to meet that orders, to meet that demand? Absolutely, yes. Okay. We closed the last quarter with $213 million in the bank. No debts. We have a lot of money to do exactly that. We are in production. We uh, extended our facility in Korea extensively. And that's maybe an opportunity for me to say that we are not alone in that. Our investors are SK Telecom, which is the second largest company in Korea, Fujifilm, which is very, very much involved in medical uh, uh, imaging, and of course, Foxconn, 
or will mm -hmm. take us from uh, cereal production to mass production next year. You know, it's interesting. Analysts like Oppenheimer are saying you're one step closer to commercialization, but there are still important milestones that you have to overcome. What are those milestones? First of all, I agree. Listen, we are, we are here for the long run. Our vision is to democratize medical imaging globally, and that's not an easy task, okay? So it will take us some time. However, I think that uh, we committed to the market that we are starting to ship uh, about 1,000 units until the uh, end of Q1 of next year, and we feel that we are very much equipped to do that. In order to do that, not only for the U.S., but in other countries, we need to get the clearance for the machine that we're actually making, which is indeed the multi-source uh, device, uh, that is based on five of those tubes in one device. That's not happened yet, and we expect that absolutely to happen within this year. Within this year. It's interesting, Ron, of course, you've had to fight sort of people trying to class you as the next Theranos, trying to, there was an elevated level of short positions against you. That's, it has come down of late. There's still only about 6% out and short on your float. How, how do you combat that sort of negative press around what is you know, disruption of a 120-year-old kind of industry. Yeah, so first of all, I think we looked, uh, we got comfort when we looked at Tesla, NVIDIA, Mobileye, and many other companies that got short support on the way up. So we felt very confident in what we have. And for that reason, we focused all our effort in, uh, in a way, crushing those, uh, those allegations simply by, by delivering. So for instance, in RSNA, which is the largest radiology uh, conference this year, we presented in live broadcasting our machines because some of the claims were that we do not have a technology. So we we uh, actually broadcast live our full body uh, machines and we brought from the US radiologists that are not uh, associated with the company to basically validate and vet uh, what we have. And uh, it was a huge success, obviously. And later on, everybody talked about FDA, this technology will not be cleared and indeed, over the last weekend, we cleared uh, this technology, the X-ray source, uh, through the FDA for a single source. Uh, then people talked about facility, and then we came out, we, we shared uh, a big investment, about $40 million investment in Korea this year yeah. in a clean room facility that will make all, all these chips. So I think uh, our way right. to fight in order to change the world is simply focus on delivery, right. execution, and so far, so good. Yeah, regarding the addressable market, there is an expansion of the 21 billion global medical imaging market to a shift from the CapEx to the MSAS model. And uh, they do not intend to compete over the market share, but they plan to expand the market uh, share. And Nanox addresses the market segments legacy vendors do not traditionally sell to. And you can also see this in these two circles. Uh, the smaller circle that's focused on hospitals, medical imaging centers, such as companies like Philips, Fuji, Samsung, Amatronic, and then you have the bigger circle, that's Nanox, and they also want to target urgent care units, outpatient clinics, and nursing homes, etc. Yeah, here's the idea on how the company wants to earn money. They came up with a pricing model and minimum annual service fee. They switch to a paper scan service business model, and Nanox covers the CapEx investment in systems and deployment. And there is a $40 total cost per scan as a global average based on the current contracts. And Nanox gets $14 out of the $40 per scan based on the current contracts. And contracting regional service providers for marketing and operation of the service. Uh, the current contracts, they provide a minimum annual service fee for seven scans per day per system against regional exclusivity. And on the left, they made an illustration on that so on 20 scans per day and $14 per scan per revenue to Nanox, if they do that 23 days per month, the MSAS model potentially generates over 397 million in recurring revenues annually. The company closed several pre-sale agreements, such as like Australia, New Zealand, Norway, with 1,000 units, Mexico, Guatemala. They also have Italy, Russia and other countries such as Spain and Belarus. Besides that, there are several strategic collaboration agreements with also 5,500 units for the United States, uh, Korea and Vietnam as well. So summarizing, there is interest in the machine 
but they only need to get the multi-source FDA approval for this. I was curious about like who are the major shareholders of this company. First of all, we have the CEO, Rand Paul Yankin, with a percentage of 8.66%. Then we have Mosh Moalem with 8.33%. And then they have uh, SK Telecom and Telecom TMT Investment Corporation. They own 10.28%. And then the last major shareholder is Just My Group Korea with 5.3%. Well, for me, I want to have a CEO with skin in the game. And he actually owns like a significant uh, yeah, ownership in this company. Well, last year, Muddy Waters Research published a short report on Nanox. And they have the following to say about this. We are short Nanox because we think it's a much bigger piece of garbage than Nikola will ever be. There are important similarities though. Nikola rolled uh, a truck down the hill to try to prove it's real. And Nanox almost certainly used somebody else's chest images to try to make its arc machine look real. They also go after the CEO by stating that uh, he didn't get formal training in radiology, physics or medicine, or that he even didn't finish his college. His only academic credentials seem to be a two-year stint he spent at the Basel Academy of Arts and Design and our investigators, they contacted the administration who confirmed that he did not graduate. Well, the gist of it is that Muddy Waters Research believes it's all a scam and on top of that, they posted uh, a Twitter report saying that uh, Nanox uh, did not meet its announced milestones. I leave a link in the description for you. You can download the 43 pages long report so you can judge it yourself. And now the financials of Nanox. The consolidated statements of operations is very short because the company doesn't make any revenue at all. They only have expenses. We can look at the operating expenses which consists of research and development, marketing, and general and administrative. You can also observe that these three components are rising over time. The net loss in 2018 was 1.9 million US dollars and this increased to 43.8 million in 2020. The second point I want to mention for you is that the weighted average number of ordinary shares outstanding is also increasing over time, which implies that they are regularly offering shares which will cause shareholder dilution for you. And lastly, the opportunities and the risks. Well, there was one big elephant in the room for this company and that is getting or not getting the additional 510k applications with respect to the multi-source Nanox Arc and Nanox Cloud approved. Additional opportunities I see is the attraction in the stock that is coming down to the business model that is based on the paper scan service uh, to support the accelerated adoption. So you don't have to buy this machine up front. And I also like that Ran Polyankin has a sufficient stake in the company. Additional risks. Well, new stock offerings will cause more shareholder uh, dilution and you are currently funding the development phase, so you're betting on a breakthrough because this company doesn't have any revenue at all. There's also a significant short interest in this stock. So to conclude, should you buy Nano X Imaging? Well, from my point of view, it's a very speculative play. If you want to buy the stock, only allocate a small amount of money and only invest something that you are willing to lose but if they get this approval done it will be a very big reward thank you everyone for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it and that you actually learned something and see you on the next company